All right, we're back again, and we're going to talk a little bit more about levers. Now, I have drawn here three different levers, and the purpose of this little lesson is to do some actual calculations with the ideal mechanical advantage. And I have three different levers here, and I guess the first thing that we'd have to do is figure out what type of levers we're working with. So let's take a look at the first lever. And if you recall, in the, pre in the previous video, I gave you this little uh, acronym to remember. I said, remember this, F-R-E-1-2-3. And I said that would help you remember whether you're dealing with a first class, a second class, or a third class lever. And so let's look at the first lever, and we can see that the fulcrum lies somewhere between the resistance and the effort forces. So if the fulcrum, F, is between the effort and the resistance forces, then this is a first class lever. So the first lever here is a first class lever because the fulcrum is between the resistance and the effort. Uh, this middle lever, we can see that the effort is between the fulcrum and the resistance, so if the effort is between the fulcrum and the resistance, that's a third class lever. So the center lever, we've identified it now, it's a third class lever. The last lever over here on the end, we notice that the resistance is between the fulcrum and the effort, and if the resistance is between the fulcrum and the effort, that makes it a second class lever. So we have on the paper, we have a first class lever, a third class lever, and a second class lever. Well, let's go ahead and figure out for each one of these levers what the ideal mechanical advantage is. In our first lever, we notice that the distance from the fulcrum to where the effort force is applied, which by the way is the input side of the machine or the effort side of the machine, the distance from the fulcrum to the effort force is twice as long as the distance from the fulcrum to the resistance force. And I actually drew this lever like this so I wouldn't have to use a ruler to measure the sides of the lever. If you notice right here, if you look carefully, you can see I made a little mark right there. And that mark shows me that this effort side is one, two, two times longer than the resistance side over here. And so our ideal mechanical advantage, if you remember, the ideal mechanical advantage is defined as the ratio between the input side and the output side of the machine. That gives us, for the input side, two units of length. I could get a ruler out and measure it, but I'm not going to. And the output side, the resistance side, measured from the fulcrum to where the resistance force is, is only one unit. Well, we can cancel that unit out. And if I divide two by one, that gives us an ideal mechanical advantage of two. So the ideal mechanical advantage for the first class lever is two. Now, the ideal mechanical advantage, if you recall, is how many times the machine, in an ideal situation, how many times the machine would multiply your effort force. So if we multiply this effort force by 2, we get 40 newtons. So what this is telling us is that if we push down with an effort of only 20 newtons, on this side of the lever, the effort side, the input side of the lever, that we should be able to lift or balance a force of 40 newtons on this left-hand side or resistance side or output side of the lever. So this machine is actually multiplying the any input force by a factor of 2. So how much resistance would we be able to lift? We would be able to lift with a 20 newton input force we would be able to lift a 40 newtons output force. All right, let's go over and take a look at our third class lever. We're going to calculate the ideal mechanical advantage. 
and the ideal mechanical advantage is always the input side divided by the output side of the machine. And to measure the length of the arms on this third class lever, we always start at the fulcrum. We measure to where the effort force is, and that's one unit. If you notice in this case, the resistance arm goes from the fulcrum all the way out to where the resistance force is, and that length is actually twice as long as from the fulcrum to the effort force. So the input side here is one unit. And the output side is one, two units. Cancel units out. Well, one divided by two is 0.5. So this third class lever multiplies any effort force by 0.5. So if I pull up here with a force of, it says here, 80 newtons, if I pull up right here with a force of 80 newtons, I can only lift, watch this, 40 newtons of resistance. So you might say, why use a third class lever? It actually makes the work harder as far as force goes to do. Well, that's true, but you don't use a third class lever to make the work easier in terms of force. You use a third class lever to make the work easier to do in terms of speed or distance. Because if I lift this effort one distance unit upward, the resistance is going to move, in this case, two units which gives me an increase in speed. And that's why a third class lever is a broom, a hockey stick, a baseball bat, any device where you're trying to increase the speed at which you do the work. So the force of resistance that we'd be able to lift right here is only 40 newtons. But you move it twice as far. OK, we're going to take a look at this second class lever. We're going we're to go about this a little bit differently we're going to calculate the ideal mechanical advantage. And then we're going to set a resistance force of 60 newtons on this lever. And we're going to figure out how much effort it would actually take to move that 60 newton force, ideally. So let's calculate the ideal mechanical advantage. And the ideal mechanical advantage, again, is input side divided by output side. The input side measured from the fulcrum to the effort force is, in this case, one, two units. And the output side is only one unit from the fulcrum to the resistance force. So the idea of mechanical advantage here is two. So any effort force that we put in is going to be multiplied by a factor of two. So any resistance that we want to move is going to be divided by a factor of two. So if we divide 60 newtons by two, we get an effort force of 30 newtons. See, the idea of mechanical advantage multiplies the effort force, or it divides the resistance force. Well, they, that sounds reasonable. They're on opposite sides of the machine, and they are opposite mathematical functions. So if we divide the resistance force by a factor of two, we get 30 newtons. So the effort force that we could move here or the effort force that we would apply to move our 60 newtons would only be 30 newtons. So we can move a 60 newton effort, a 60 newton resistance with a 30 newton effort force. Pull up with a force of 30 newtons and you can lift 60 newtons. And that's a second class lever. Well, there you have it three calculations for three different levers, a first class lever, a third class lever, and a second class lever. Okay, I have drawn a first class lever on this piece of paper. 
Now I know it's a first class lever because the fulcrum is between the resistance and the effort. So I measured both sides of this lever with this fancy measuring device when I drew it and I found out that the output side of the lever is 3.7 centimeters long and the input side of the lever is 7.3 centimeters long. Well, what I want you to do is go ahead and calculate the ideal mechanical advantage for this lever. So pause the video and then when you turn it back on, I'll help you calculate the ideal mechanical advantage and we'll see if you got it right. So pause the video now. All right, if you're back, let's take a look at the ideal mechanical advantage for this first class lever. The ideal mechanical advantage we know is a ratio between the input side of the machine and the output side of the machine. And that, of course, is the effort side input and resistance side output. So if we look at the two different sides, we see that the input side of the machine is 7.3 centimeters long, and the output side of the machine is 3.7 centimeters long. That gives us a ratio of, let's see, 7.3 divided by 3.7. Looks like 1.97, and we have a couple of significant digits there. I'm going to go ahead and round that off to 2. So that's uh, 2.0. So our ideal mechanical advantage is 2.0. What that means is, is that any effort force we apply to this side of the machine is going to be multiplied by a factor of two. So we should be able to lift twice as much resistance force. So how do we use that ideal mechanical advantage? <clears throat> force of resistance equals two times the force of effort, which is 120 newtons. Force of effort. That gives us 240 newtons of resistance. So we can actually lift a resistance force of 240 newtons with a 120 newton effort force using this first class lever.